just watched an incredible game here at Croke Park. Kilkenny beaten uh, Dublin by 3.20 to 2.22. It ended up being one point in it for a finish, but there was 16 in it early in the second half. Dublin had been absolutely crucified in that first half by Kilkenny, and let's be honest, more specifically by TJ Reid, who really was incredible. He scored that goal in the first half. He set up two go- the other two goals in- over the course of the game, and there was a goal chance at the start of the second half for Wally Walsh, which he also played him in for. But my God, the fact that like I just ran into Tommy Walsh there and he just said that would have been the shock of the century. And it would, because when have we ever seen Kilkenny go from 16 points ahead to be pulled back like this? Normally to get those rat attack goals like we saw there in that first half. And I think they'll just check how quickly they scored the goals. But they scored the goals in the 13th minute, 14th minute. And then uh, they got to the other one just before half time. And that looked like it had absolutely ended the game because... This Dublin, or sorry, over the years, Kilkenny, when they put go 16 points ahead, they go and win by 25 points. But this kind of brings up questions about Kilkenny now, doesn't it? Because in the past, they, w- they would have seen a team off completely. Dublin got their matchups wrong. There's, there's no two ways about it. Um, I think James Madden has had a really good Dublin championship and he held Conor Callaghan very well and a couple of other people very well throughout that championship. And he had a good game last week. But putting him on TJ Reid and putting him, getting him dragged all over the place. And like TJ Reid wins 50 50 balls off absolutely everybody. And I think it was going to be very tough for James Madden, who was a really good player. And I'm not, I'm not trying to zone in on him at all, but let's call a spade a spade here. That did not work out whatsoever. It should have been probably Owen O'Donnell. I think for the most part, the likes Colin Fenley probably wasn't a huge impact on the game. He scored a point. Owen Cody scored a point. Billy Ryan scored 1-1, and he was quite dangerous, although he was taken off in the second half. I think Richie Hogan is probably going to be under pressure to get back in the next day because he came on and hit a couple of wides that he normally wouldn't. Um, in that first half, every player, every attacker for Dublin, um, sorry, for Kilkenny, had scored before half time from play, whereas with Dublin, Keane Boland had scored a point out in the wing, Danny Sutcliffe had scored a point in the wing, and Donald Burke, who was largely playing outside the forward, he'd scored a point, but the rest of the forwards didn't at all. And what it came down to is... Matty Kenny was looking to bring on scorers, finishers, as we so often hear now in the GA, where you, you bring on lads who you think will, as the game is opening up and the opposition defence is tired, then come on and then get a few scores and you might win a tight game. But if you start lads who aren't really going to score in the forward line, you put yourself under absolutely massive pressure. So Davy Kyo is a really good player, but an inside forward, I don't think he's an inside forward. Liam Rush started up in the for, inside forward line. Doesn't look right at the moment anyway. When he is right, he's really, really dangerous. So you two lads who basically aren't necessarily going to be massive scorers in there and didn't have massive support in there either. Meanwhile, your your backs were getting et alive. And it was only when they played with a, an extra man back there that it started to tighten up. But anyway, back to the, the forward line. You didn't have scorers in there. Then you bring on your scorers, which are Trollier Dillon and um, Ronan Hayes, and all of a sudden the game turned. Ronan Hayes, really, really good. He scored a brilliant goal. Trollier scored uh, four points, Eamon Dillon. And he was class. And I think those two lads will have to start from here on out. But it was hugely important for for this Dublin project, if you want to look at it in those terms, that they pulled this back and made it respectable. And there was possibly a bit of white line fever there towards the very end. They actually had levelled the game with Dara Gray scoring a point in the, I think it was an injury time towards the end. Mark Shute, another sub who came on and made a bit of a difference because for the Chris Crummy goal, Mark Shute had done a nice little centre for Donald Burke. He came through, had a shot, it was blocked at Chris Crummy. Uh, whipped it back in but I think Dublin will know and like sometimes you have to learn your lessons the hard way before you change around like this is something we saw with Tipperary in the Munster final of 2019 they learned their lessons the hard way in in that game where Limerick just eviscerated them and I think Dublin might similarly learn some lessons here whether it'll be enough going on the championship it's hard to know but like just about to watch the, the Galway Wexford match that's coming up in a little while and you know whoever comes through that I mean as the game goes on you know, different things might change my thinking, but Kilkenny, that's that's a sort of a worrying performance in a way to be that far ahead and make such hard work of it and rely on Hugh Lawler to come up and score a late winner. And then I don't know, I mean, there was even a chance for Donald Burke to score a leveling point from just outside his uh, around his own 45 there and a bit of mountain from it. Kilkenny forward meant that the free was brought up and allowed that opportunity. Uh, he seemed to just snatch at it and not hit it right, but. Why was Kilkenny? Yeah, I wouldn't be blown away by it because you win the first half by 313 to 7 points. So you win that by 15 points and you end up losing the second half by 14. That is not great. I mean, Kilkenny are still a brilliant team. We know that. But um, do they have enough players outside TJ Reid? Because when I was sitting here thinking about it at half time, I was like, how am I going to do a report on this game that doesn't come across as a love letter to, to TJ Reid? But if you take TJ Reid out of that, 
there's an awful lot of ordinary performances there for Kilkenny and are they quite at the level of the very, very top teams at the minute? I mean, they have a bit of work to do. Maybe they would have expected to win this game. Maybe they eased off massively. Maybe Dublin aren't absolutely the best team to, in the world or maybe they're better than they showed in the first half. But um, yeah, that was not uh, overly impressive by Kilkenny, certainly as I went down the stretch because as we know, it's not a case of Kilkenny teams easing up over the years. They look to absolutely bury teams for finish. So that's the report here. Kilkenny finish uh, the winners here by 320 Dublin 222, brought to you by 65hurls.com. Go get your sticks there. Yes.